about doing a Disneyland Paris self drive tips vlog. So we've got five top tips that are our top tips and then we've got some information towards the end. Um, we always tend to drive because it's just a lot easier for us having Isla, having a wheelchair van. Um, if we need to just travel back, we can just, you know, she's not well or has a major seizure and we're concerned and we need to get her checked out. We can just travel home um, whenever we need to and we can just pay, you know, whatever the crossing is. We can just literally turn up at the crossing if we have to and book there. We've also um, on different occasions added time on the end of a home day where we've had issues with traffic, haven't we? Yeah, so um, we've had certain situations where we've been able to add a day on because we've lost a day via, you know, just trouble chaos. Um, but all the years we've been doing it, I mean, how many, I mean, yeah, all the years we've been doing it, we haven't really had much trouble chaos. No. Um Traveling a little bit and snow was interesting, wasn't it? But calm. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to bring out the snow every <laughs> time. Um <laughs> we may as well just quickly tell the story. So basically, <laughs> Disneyland Paris were having a sale. And I thought, you know what? I want a bit of that sale. I want a bit of that. So I said to my husband, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Can we go to Disneyland Paris like tomorrow? And he's like, really? And I said, yeah, come on, let's go. So, um, <laughs> we basically just packed up the car. And then and the we police like, from the east came in, didn't it? We're going to go tomorrow morning. Perfect. Book to stay off site. First time driving, no experience whatsoever about driving in France, and the beast from the east just was intense. It took us hours and hours <laughs> to get down to the tunnel. To get down to, we went on the ferry, didn't we, to Dover? We were like, no way is this ferry gonna go. It was so choppy, it was windy, it was snowing we'd had like verges like snow plows were struggling to get through mm. and we were just like plodding behind <laughs> on the motorway all the way to dover it was insane it's really stupid you know um but we did it i feel like we were quite lucky like we got we were ahead of the storm in each spot we were at so like every time we reached somewhere it had just started to snow yeah and then literally we would be like, um, we'd stop and have a coffee and then be like, oh, it's snowing, it's snowing again. Let's get in the car. Let's get ahead of it. So we sort of were a little bit ahead of it. And then when we got onto the boat, it was so choppy. I've never felt so sick. No. It was unbelievably choppy, unbelievably choppy. So, and then when we got to France, it was just like rain. And then mm. we had, <laughs> we rang my van the next morning and it was glorious. In France, it was super hot. I mean, hot. the waterfall was frozen. It's so like the castle, wasn't it? So it'd been yeah, but it was cold, just yeah. super warm. It yeah. was just super warm. Everything was thawing out. It was super warm, and you know, for like it was March, wasn't it? I think it was quite you know. Um, and at home, apparently, it was like minus something. And in France, we were there with like just a jumper on. This is great. <laughs> so yeah, that was that. <laughs> So our first tip is fuel. Um, so normally we allocate £250 for fuel. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we spend that and sometimes we don't. It does depend. At the minute, with the fuel prices so high, I really do think that we would um, use it. And then I, when I say 250 that is in pounds. So that's in a bank account, in pounds. When we go over to France, the, the fuel will come out of that bank account. We tend to fuel up and fill the car up before we leave home. Um, we collect that. Tesco points. So we tend to find try and find a Tesco to get our points. M more so, isn't yeah. it? And then down in 
Dover. More often than not, we get the boat just because it's cheaper to travel cross over. But if the train's cheaper than the, um, if the Euro Tunnel is it's cheaper, cheaper or, about the same price. or about the same price, we'll we'll opt for the shorter journey time of the tunnel. So we'll go on the tunnel. But there is a Tesco's quite close to, to both. Um, to both, yeah. So. We tend to fill up at a Tesco's, but there is that option, just saying, you know, there's that option. We tend to fill up in this country, just so we know where we are, to top, we just top back up, don't we? Keep the car at um, full fuel. And there is, in Paris, in France, when you get over to France, there is not an awful lot of um, petrol stations. I think there is one. There's one in Calais. But you have to go quite a way to the tolls, which will another tip later on we'll get to the tolls that um once you get past the tolls there are a lot yeah. there are a hell of a lot of service stops and even if there's not petrol stations there's service stops and um, you can stop there for um picnic seating if it's yeah. nice weather if you want to sit and eat outside there's toilets in nearly every service stop there's toilets there yeah. So if you're desperate for the toilet or you need to change the children or the children need the toilet, there's so many places to stop in France. And a lot of the signs also for the various services, if they haven't got a petrol station, they'll tell you how many kilometres it is it's, to the next yeah. petrol station. Yeah. Which is really good. We don't really have that no. here. They're very thorough in their information on the motorway. Um, but there are a lot of fuel stops and I'd recommend, um, I'd recommend stopping um grabbing a coffee they do really good coffee yeah. if you're early in the morning they do fresh squeezed orange juice um all the croissants all that sort of thing in every service station uber fresh really nice it's just really worth a stop if um you're traveling at breakfast time definitely or late at night and you just want a sandwich or a snack way cheaper than what you might and more on offer if you're staying at an off-site hotel mm. you might you know it would be worth maybe stopping there and just grabbing something quick to eat um or it may not depending on your plans but i just think it's a good option um when we get when you actually get to disneyland paris so say you are staying on site and you're driving you can use their petrol station there is a petrol station it's located really close to the hotel cheyenne isn't it mm -hmm. um very close to santa fe uh, walking distance I think it's the same entrance into Santa Fe as where the petrol station is to give you a point of reference when you get there if you try and head towards the Santa Fe you'll um, you'll see the petrol station so it's a good directional point very for much you. Once you're in the so the Disney Hotel was a sign posted off the motorway towards the entrance to the parks and once you're off that slip road all the individual hotels are listed on the signposts so and they're really close yeah the hotels may be distant far far and wide around but they they do their though it's a little bit confusing their their um it makes sense doesn't it the yeah. layout of how they've done their roads really makes sense it's really easy to navigate once you get to that point it's really easy to navigate around there you've also got if you're driving you've got the old shen which has got a petrol station and what we wanted to know to touch on is a lot of the petrol stations in France, I'll not the Disney one. The one at Disney, you can use cash, you can use your cards, and if you put thirty pound fuel on fuel in, it'll be thirty pound. Gives you pain shop. Now a lot of the ones on the motorway, you go in and you pay before you put mm -hmm. your fuel in. Or their pay at pump. Or their pay at pump, and if they're pay at pump, they will take a hundred pounds irregardless of how much fuel you put in. Yeah. They'll take a hundred euros out of your bank. And if you say you put thirty pounds in, or forty euros, fifty euros, sixty euros, you have to wait. wait for that to be refunded. So that's worth bearing in mind. Um, so that's everything I've got to say on the fuel and petrol needs. And then over to you um, for tip number two. <laughs> so when driving in France, you need to take your car insurance documents. So you need a printed copy of those car insurance documents in your car. So the police can check them. Your driving license. If you're a professional driver, you need all your driver cards, and they physically need to be on you. You need your registration certificate, or your vehicle on hire certificate if your vehicle is leased. 
So we have permission to have it in class. So if you're on motability, you need to bring yeah. motability. Um, you need a high visibility jacket for everybody in the car, and they need to be accessible. And we mean everybody. Yeah. So children, babies, as everybody, well, yeah. everybody. So the easiest way to do it is if you buy a kit of RAC or come in a bag, just put that in somewhere in your car. Don't bury it in your boot because if the police want it, they want it there and then. They do not want you digging through your entire boot to find it. Um, you need alcohol test kits, which are just little sticks that you put a slide sample in and it'll test for alcohol. They need to be in date and they need to be accessible, which is a police game will check for them. Mm -hmm. I think it's a 50 euro fine if you haven't got it. And they can be big fines, the police yeah. can choose to fine you. What they want, that can some yeah. of the fines can be really big and fines. And if the police do decide to fine you, it is on spot payment. Especially now we've left the EU, they do not have access to DVLA's database. They will want the payment there and then. Um, you need a UK sticker, not a GB sticker. So the law changed two years ago, I think it was. Again, where, the EU, wasn't it? Yeah, when we left the EU, so rather than using the EU designation of GB, they used the UN's UK designation. So you need UK stickers, GB ones are not valid. Headlight defectors, so the little stickers are on your headlights to change the direction of the beam. If you have a newer car, it may do it automatically. Check your check your car, but also I would say because it's in French law, carry them anyway. Yeah. Even if you don't need to use them, carry them anyway. Because again, if they find that you haven't got them and you haven't got a way of putting them on and they're not happy, they will find you. Yeah. So it's, it's not like here where you can button them up, they'll find you. So the easiest way to get all this is to get an RAC driving pack from RAC's website. The bonus with RAC's website is about £25 of just a lot for the pack. You can add in high visits. Mm -hmm. So they supply two, you can add child ones in, you can add other ones, you can customise the kit. Also, it turns out you now need a warning triangle, which you didn't used to need because I've just checked on the internet as well, and that's been added. You used to only need it in Yeah, you used to only need it in Germany, Belgium, I think it was. Um, Two additional things I will say quickly. If you're planning to go into central Paris in your car, you need a clean air sticker. You need to get that in the UK before you go to France. Again, if you do not have one, they will find you. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to a pound snow area, so which is unlikely from Disneyland Paris, yeah, but okay. if you're going to the Alps, you also South, need snow yeah. chains. So if you're going anywhere that's designated as snow zone, you need snow chains as well. I think that's everything I was going to say in relation to that. Yes, yeah, so, so tip number three is tolls. Um, so it's more of a guideline rather than a tip, but it's just to say that on average, um, we tend to keep about £50 pounds um, in an account. Um, we use a Monzo card, which is really great for travel. We find really, really great for travel. Um, it's got really good exchange rates, um, you get the best exchange rate on the day. We don't have to faff around with travel money, but we just do find that we always keep 50 aside of our spending budget for the tolls. You're looking about between 23 and just under 25. Um, it just varies a little bit. Um, we found it varies a little mm -hmm. bit. I don't think it should vary, but sometimes we've had really wacky prices. Mm -hmm. Like one time we came back and it was like seventeen euros, and we were like that. That shouldn't be, shouldn't be it. But <coughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't. I can't really say. But it's just a bit. Yeah, random. Random. I don't know whether it's if you've occurred. Tr sometimes if you've occurred travel delays. Like we've found it to be a bit more, it's just weird, it depends how, I think it is there how long you spend two, on the road, it's a bit weird. There is two routes as well up to Calais and Dunkirk and that seems to make a difference yeah. as well, from which motorway you go on. Um, yeah, so it's, I we just give, we just give, we just to say, right, it's £25 yeah. each way and then we know we've got enough. It's not going to be more than that and it's definitely less, it's definitely less. But we always just do budget that. And that's for um, a car. I would add that. That's for a car or a van under three and a half ton. Obviously, if it's heavier than that, it's going to be more. Yeah. Um, we also have just put, just blanketly put this, because obviously we were just putting money aside with the toll. 
but you may need a little bit of cash if you do want to just go solely on your cards which is fine um disneyland take everything if you're just going to disneyland they will take anything that you want to give them as long as it's a currency they will take it so i uh, don't worry about if you think oh well I've, you know what about my children's cash wise they'll take it um <laughs> they will take it and there's also an exchange bureau in the village so if you brought some extra money with you that um or you haven't had a chance to change some money or you want to change some extra money um you into euros from english pounds you can do that there and um, they're really great aren't they about oh, actually about that so, so there's a bureau right on site if you book an off-site hotel through expedia booking.com divago divago any of like these that. third party websites i know with premier class a's and it's probably the same with all off-site hotels it does not charge the city tax in with the prepayment rate so you've got to make sure you've got five ten euros roughly it normally is it's not a lot it's about two it's about two euros yeah. a night it's in it's, cash it's a tiny amount they may they may now accept cards because of mm -hmm. covid because i've not done it through these websites before after COVID. we have been at a hotel before when they've said we can't do that it has to be cash yeah. we can't do it by card so that's just something to note that it is always worth maybe having but again a little bit of cash on you that's off-site hotels disney will take the tax as part of their hotel booking mm -hmm. and if you book direct through louvre's or premier class a or any of the actual hotel chains a lot of them will be included with their prepayment rate and they'll take it in one go the only briefing i would say about that if you you choose a paid hotel rate the rate you first see is likely to be different to the rate the actual total price because they include city tax in mm -hmm. the final rate they don't include it on the rate you see on the first screen uh okay so technically we went off a bit of piece there but it's good information um number what are we on now one two three tip number four mm -hmm. speed limits mm -hmm. french speed limits on motorways only so urban road and what do you call them just like the small roads at 90 and 50 kilometers an hour standard unless the sign post is otherwise on the motorways the speed limit changes depending on the weather if it is dry the speed limit is 130 kilometers an hour if it's wet it's 110 kilometers an hour the additional point i would say regarding that is there is a speed trap as you enter the tolls they will record your record the time you go through the tolls as you leave the tolls they will record what time you got it took you to get to those tolls if you have been speeding between those two points the police tend to sit the other side of the tolls and they will pull you over irrespective irrespective if you've got a uk sticker on and you're speeding they will put and they see you they will pull yeah, you especially if you're on british plates now mm -hmm. again because of brexit they no longer have the ability to look up your name and address and send you a ticket when you get home. And there's no tolerance. So no. Even before, even when you're in the UK, that the EU, there's no tolerance. Do not copy the French because the French will yeah. inevitably speed. They do. It isn't one rule for them or one rule for us. But you can guarantee if they're going to pull a French person or a UK person, they're going to pull us. Yeah. Rowan's banging in his high chair. Um, and then sat navs is the next one. Um, so your speed limit are on your sat nav a lot of cars speed now have alert. your speed camera alerts a lot of newer cars especially a lot of cars now have that it built in that needs to be off because you will get hefty fine for that so if they catch you they call and they you will over check. and they check your sat nav and they find you have speed camera alerts turned on they're not like the British police. They will not just tell you to turn them off. They may do. They may, if you find a nice police officer who's in a good mood, he may just tell you to turn them off. If you don't, at best, you'll get a fine. Secondly, you'll get a fine and they'll seize your sat nav because your sat nav's got the speed camera alert turned on. At worst, the law does allow them to seize your car. So they can seize your entire vehicle. 
to make sure they are turned off before you leave this country. Don't risk it because if they do catch you, and to be totally honest, the easiest way they're going to catch you is they will watch you drive down the motorway and if every time they see you see a speed camera or it beeps on your sat-nav, you slow down, they're going to wonder what you're playing at. Mm. And they will then pull you over and go, what are you doing? It sounds grim, but it's not that bad. No. It's not bad. It's just it's, knowing the rules yeah. and sticking to them because we aren't French, we are British, and at the end, it just is one of those things. It's really worth just playing by the rules because none of this, you know, none of this needs to be an issue. None of this no. needs to affect your holiday. So we're trying to give you the best advice and say and these the last, are things not to do. And the last thing you need is to have you spending money, your holiday money, everything that you Going need on for a your holiday. Fine, yeah. yeah, everything that you need for your holidays ready and set up and then getting pulled by the police and I'm going, we want 100 euros and we want it now. Mm -hmm. So it's better to be free once, armed. Once you, know, once you know these basics and you have driven it once, it's fairly straight, yeah. isn't it? Once you get off the boat. Um, it's all, all motorway driving. All the, you sort of, you're near enough the same really, aren't you? I mean, a sort of, you're sort of, you're sort of Dunkirk here, Calais there, and then where the tunnel puts you out, it's almost more, you feel more towards the left, don't you? And you yeah. sort of come round by the port. So you're all very much in the same place. So getting off the boat, you know, getting off the, coming off the train, whatever. Um, just sort of straight off. You sort of going straight, yeah. and you know you're sat up. And it's all, it's basically head towards Lille, isn't it? Yeah, it's head Start towards with. head towards um, head towards Lille. You know, get your get your sat nav on your phone on. Get your sat nav on. Obviously, your speed camera alert turned off, and it's pretty much a straight. You don't feel it obviously isn't dead straight, but you do feel like you pretty much just go straight, straight, straight. I think you've got one turning off, and then you literally turn off again, then to Disney. So you really do go straight mm -hmm. for a long period of the drive. It's really not a bad drive once you've done it once, and you, you've got your your grasp of it. It's really not a bad drive. Okay. Um, can you go and deal with Rowan, please? Sorry, yeah. it's just I want him out of that high chair because Frank he was biting. Rowan's just watching telly in Isa's room in his high chair. Um, free on-site parking. So this is more of advice than an actual tip. So free on-site parking. On -site parking. Um, disabled badge or not, you pay for parking, um, which is £30 for a day. So if you're staying off site and you are driving up on, you know, there are plenty of bus, plenty of places to stay where they've got an on-site uh, shuttle bus, which is a free shuttle service. Or you may have to pay, I think some places you may have to pay about two euros for the shuttle. Um, but I might be wrong there. I'm just thinking that's off my top of my head. I'm sure I've read that somewhere in the past. Um, but yeah, if you're driving and parking, it's £30 for the night. Now, if you get a Magic Plus or an Infinity and you're parked, you might find that you are stay saving a lot of money. A Magic Flex. A Magic Flex. You might find you're saving a lot of money just on parking alone. Uh, we did one trip where we actually did seven days. Um, we did a long trip and we found that just having the free parking paid for one of our annual passes. And we were then able, in that first year, we then, when we were first annual pass holders, we en it enabled us to have two trips with the annual pass. So just the parking alone um, is, it may be worth just looking at having one annual pass, even if you are only going on one trip, looking at the levels, you know, your infinity gives you a photo pass, yeah. which um, is a yearly photo pass. So it gives you free gives parking. 364 days does not include Christmas Day. Yes, yeah, so it gives you 364 days, doesn't include Christmas Day. And also you do get 20% off all your merchandise, 15% off your meals. That's quick service and sit down. Yeah, quick service. And when service. you get a sit down, you get a free drink, don't you? Yeah. So the one thing I would say, and I'll link this all below anyway, if you're thinking about annual passes and to get free parking, just click on the link below, check the availability calendar on their website, 
just to make sure the dates you're going are actually available. And you can book three days at a time. But we've often found, we often find if you book, if you want to go for more than that, it's the weekends that book up. Yeah. So there's normally plenty of availability. Um, it does look like, so I was looking on there the other day, it does look like they're going to at some point separate out the Disneyland Park and the Disney Studios. Mm. Don't exactly know how the hopping is going to work between the two. Because of what's happened recently is you won't be able to get a manual pass reservation, the studios will be practically empty, and the main park will be full. So me and Isla went in to sort out our disability pass last time we were there. Yeah, you can always risk it said, as well. You could, if yeah, you're an annual pass holder, like you can always risk it. Studios, so yeah. we, we, did, um, we turned up late in the, after, in the day. We went in, um, we had some um, admin to do. Let's put it that way. Um, for Isla um, and her pass, so we went over to the studios to do it. Cause that's why they send you now. Um, if you're an annual pass holder, to the annual pass office, and the park was empty enough that they had they had allocation. So they let Jason and Isla um, go in and ride some rides, mm -hmm. have a good time, have a couple of hours there. So it's not to say that you might not turn up in the afternoon, they might not let you in. It's if there's availability, yeah. you know, they're going to want, if you're an annual pass holder or not, if there's availability, they're going to want you in there, aren't they, spending your money, you know, enjoying your time. So, yeah, so that's all our driving tips. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions regarding uh, anything, driving, annual pass system, anything that you want to know, do comment. Um, and we will endeavour to get back to you with any information that we can either find or that we've got within our knowledge. I will say that I will link to the WK site, the RAC site, the Disney availability site below. And also I'm going to do a video probably over the weekend at some point on how you can do the annual passes through a French website if you want to do pay monthly because I'd rather do mine and Isla's so I'm about to do a video whilst I'm doing it. And that is another good option um, for you uh, to spread the cost of your holiday even if you are only thinking of going once mm -hmm. um, having an annual pass and sp spreading the cost you can get some lowered down annual passes as well can't you yeah. um, you never know that might help and that's the other thing the you. first I know it's started going off subject and we will do an annual pass video the first annual pass is not valid for the first three days you receive it mm -hmm. if you buy it through the French website you can request that they send you the permanent pass so if it's two weeks till you go those three days will be took up probably whilst it's being sent from France to be honest mm -hmm. so before you actually receive it those three days are gone whereas if you're in the park and buy one you then have three days to wait for it to work but it does if you if you're going in two weeks. That is only the first. Even if you're pass. going in two weeks, you could potentially have ordered your pass. It always comes very fast for us. <coughs> yes. Uh, we did mine, and within the six days, it was already here. So it does come really fast. Um, yeah. So that's everything. Thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, um, if you need anything, um, and you want or you want any more information um, or any advice, um, please do comment. Um, like and subscribe and thank you for rolling with that field see you soon